Hey folks, and welcome to another guide video for Conan Exiles Age of Calamitous. In this video, I'm going to show you around the newly reworked faction hall that came with the last update. We will be highlighting the points of interest and in NPCs since they have been moved around the new hall. We will talk about factions, NPC to start the main quests, NPC to start faction quests, and NPC to start magic quests. We will talk about the battlegrounds as well, rework in the Cold Embrace hub, Felgarth and Elvanor hub, and the Stormhold hub, and there will be more in this video. So, if you want to know more about the information that I just mentioned earlier, hop on and enjoy the tour on the Finger Panic Express. Let's get to it. The moment that you spawn in the new faction hall, the most noticeable thing that you will find first is the floating statue of Grandmaster Ferengar. And weirdly enough, there's an NPC here, Grandmaster Ferengar Quanthis, and you can get your main quest from him. However, this Grandmaster Ferengar Quanthis is not the first NPC for your quest. The first Grandmaster Ferengar who's going to give you your tutorial quests will be located in the beach. The beach is a new spawn point, especially if you just start playing the game. And if you haven't seen that tutorial yet, check that link in the description below because I did a video for the patch update introduction and that is shown in that video. So once you're done with him, you will be spawned in here in the new faction hall and the next NPC that you need to interact to continue your main quest is this Grandmaster Ferengar. So he is the second one. Okay, so the faction hall has gotten really huge. So we even have a second level already. So we're going to do this systematically so that um, you're not going to be confused in the walkthrough. So let's go to the right first. So on this side of the faction hall, you will see the entrance to the faction hubs for the Vangul clan. You have the Cold Embrace and also the Elven Covenant. And unlike before, now you can see some NPCs walking around. Um, they're not aggro and they're not interactable. They're just purely decorations. All right, let's go to the other side. Now, on this side, you have Elvanor, you have the Stormhold, and you have Felgarth. But you will realize later on that Elvanor and Felgarth, even though they have different entrance to the hubs, they are actually located in the same hub. So they kind of like share one hub now. And I'm going to show you that later on. Next, we're going to go to the second level. So we're going to start from the right and then go around to the left. All right, let's go. Here we go. So we're already on the second level. We're going to start on the right. So there are some weapons on the table. They're not um, something that you can pick up or interact. And right here is where the Hall of Champions is located. Now, the Hall of Champions is also the place where you can find the entrance to the battlegrounds so people will be grouping up they will go to the blue side they will go to the red side and then an admin is going to set up the battlegrounds um reward system and also the map and then game on now if you want to see a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to play or set the battlegrounds check the link in the description below or Click on the pop-up notification on this video. So let's check the scoreboards real quick. So this scoreboard is per faction. So regardless of which clan you came from, as long as you belong to that faction, it's going to keep counting kill counts for that faction. So in your server, at least you will know whose faction or what faction is dominating in terms of the PvP and the battlegrounds. Now go in here. This is a different scoreboard. And this scoreboard is pretty much a bragging right um, for individuals. So you will see your in-game name in there. It's no longer perfection. It's going to be, let's say, Memnock or Oz. 
and it is gonna show kill counts and if you are you know the most murderers across all the clans in your server then your name will be on the top so it's per kill count so the more you kill the higher you rank on the scoreboard now let's go to the right all right so going to the right let's check this out here so some npcs walking around and then you will see some familiar faces of the merchants so the merchants are here so you have the ingredients trader loyalty vendor weapon dealer and you go here on the other side you have the attire dealer you have the general store and of course you have the honor token vendor now across so here we go this is the guy who can sell you the dispatch board so for those who don't know what the dispatch board is this is it you can use the dispatch board to send units so these are the units and she is the one selling them the better the unit the more expensive it is so using the dispatch board you send units to get resources artifacts weapons and more and if you want to learn how to use the dispatch board in details you can check the link in the description below or you can click on the pop-up notification on this video so again we go to the right and here you will find something really interesting and beautiful here you go omg now we go straight to the altar and you will see a familiar face grandmaster farangar quanthus again however this grandmaster farangar is giving magic quests so if you want to learn magic air fire earth water divine blood magic arcane this is the guy that you need to look for and start learning those magic and we go up and now we are on the other side so we came from that side so we're gonna check it out what we can find here okay all right so this is the profession hall so you have the hunter's guild forestry my personal favorite miners guild this is the guild master so we go to the mezzanine we have the farmers guild and we have the moonshiner skill we go to the right again so that we can fully circle around it looks really pretty that there are a lot of npcs walking around that's awesome go to the right and this is where you can change your appearance so you can customize your appearance from here this is not a brand new functionality you can find this in the previous um version of the age of calamitous then we go to the right and here so there's a lot of delicious looking food on the table however the only ones that you can interact is this one and this one the others are just purely decorations so if ever you're hungry here we go and thirsty there you go so at least if you are in the faction hall you don't have to worry about being hungry or thirsty again
you can also find the same type of food. So this one is interactable. And this one as well. And the last thing to do is to go straight up to that platform right there. And I think for those who have played AOC before, you already have a very good idea on what that place is. So let's go. All right, so this is the new look for the entrance to the Forsaken Mountain. So relics go here. There we go. Three relics on the right. And three relics on the left. And once you're able to do that, the entrance to the Forsaken Mountain, the portal, will open up. And you can already take on the final dungeon to end the story for the Age of Calamitous. Now, of course, before you start collecting the relics, you have to make sure that you get that quest first. And when I say that quest, we're talking about Grandmaster Ferengar again. Now, always remember that Grandmaster Ferengar is always going to be involved in the main quest line. So, if ever you're going to interact with him, he will give you the final quest line. So, once you're done with your faction, sub faction, if everything is already done, you're already in the late game, this will be the last thing that you need to do. Come here and collect the relics so that you can unlock the Forsaken Mountain. Now that we're done with the faction hall, Let's check the rework that they have done to some of the faction hubs. Let's check the Stormhold first. Alright, going through the portal. And ho ho ho. OMG. They did not really hold back. This is freakishly huge. Probably not even for humans. All right, so I was here one time and um, I checked this area right here on the right. There's nothing there yet. It seems like it's a placeholder, but there's something in here that's a point of interest. So we have to check it out. All right, so for those who are familiar with the banner, this is the hall where you can get the quest to unlock the Path of Justice sub faction. So, the quest NPC is here, General Nathan Galleron. And he will give you a quest that will allow you to unlock the Path of Justice sub-faction. So all you gotta do is do the quest that he's asking you to do, report back, and the moment that you're already back, you can interact with this statue. And this statue is going to unlock the Path of Justice sub-faction. All right, so we're back at the entrance and we just came from that side of the mansion. So we're going to go to the left. Now, there's nothing in there yet. Uh, maybe a placeholder. And here we have an interactable food. There we go. And the banner tells you that this is the hall where you can unlock the North Watch sub faction. Now, all we gotta do is find the NPC. Here we go. So, Admiral Terence Fowler is the NPC who will give you the quest for you to unlock the sub faction for North Watch. Now, he's also the one selling Grand Portrait of King Marcus for two gold coins and 10 silver coins and in the patch note it says that it's supposed to give you a buff i haven't tried it yet so feel free to test it yourself so i'm back at the entrance again so we've been there path of justice been there north watch so we're going upstairs but there's nothing on the right side yet so we're going to the left there is a point of interest on the left side And here we are. Alright, so let's take this one at a time. 
this is where you can find your contractor the contractor is a very important npc in all factions the reason for that is this is where you can buy your master of coin you can buy shepherd you can buy the banker if you're doing pvp and where you can buy stuff like the market trading and a whole lot of others you can also buy her the contractor herself and place her in your camp that's where she is and then a brand new addition aside from reworking the whole hub they have also placed portals in all the faction hubs including the old ones and i will get to this one in a bit let's interact with this officer and this officer is going to tell you find commander redcliffe on the other side of the portal there we go so we're gonna try and receive this quest now if you have played the quest line before for the faction quest not the main quest the faction quest the faction quest npcs were scattered all over the dark forest from here to here right and they were quite challenging to actually find however this time you have a direct portal to your initial quest npc for your faction so you don't have to roam around the dangerous dark forest anymore because this portal is going to lead you directly to the first npc that will give you the faction quest so you just have to go through it there we go now let me show you my map so we're just actually here right so quest location Redcliffe. That's my first quest NPC for the Stormhold faction. And he is here. There we go. Interact and you will see that I have a lot of quests that I need to do for this man. And with this update, you can see that the quests are already numbered so that you can easily follow. Now, you can just go back to the portal and it will send you back to the faction hub there we go we're back in the stormhold faction hub now the last thing that i'm going to show you is not really a point of interest there's nothing that you can actually do with it maybe someday they're going to give more content to it but let me show you nonetheless All right, so this is where you can find Princess Alexandra Fall. You should know her by now if you have played the previous version of AOC because she's always by the entrance of every dungeon giving you time attack quests or challenge. Interacting with her does not really give you any mission or quest. It's just talk and goodbye. So maybe a placeholder for an additional content. Now, let's check the rework that they have made for Felgarth and for Elvenor. Now, they're actually just in one hub, so let's check it out. Let's go through Elvenor first, and then I'll show you that I'll go through Felgarth, and we will end up in the same location. There we go. So you have the Elvenor banners. And this time, I'm going to go through Felgarth, and let's see if we will end up in the same faction hub. And there you go, the same faction hub. So you see the banners, Elvenor and Felgarth in one faction hub. Now going to the right, you will see the statue for Holy Syndicate. But of course, you need to find the NPC first so that you can unlock the Holy Syndicate. You see the decoration there for the pet for the Holy Syndicate. It's just decoration, so don't fret. And then just across is the arcane shrine for the arcane magic. Now there's an access going downstairs, but we're going to take the second level first. All right, here, another point of interest. This is where you can find the royal contractor or the Elvenor 
action. Now, as what we have talked about earlier, the contractor is where you can buy um, Master of Coin, Shepherd, and a whole lot more. So, check it out. So, here we go. So, the Soul Pool is purely decoration, alright? It's not gonna kill you. Faction Hub should be a safe place for everyone. Now, on the right side, you will see the statue for the Order of Revelation and the statue for the Order of Arcanum. So, once you have already unlocked your sub-factions, you can interact with those statues. Now, one of the NPCs that will give you your sub-faction quest is right there. Okay, so Grandmaster Theron is here. And Grandmaster Theron is going to give you the quest to unlock the Order of Revelation sub-faction and to be part of the Holy Syndicate as well. So once you're done doing the sub-faction quest, you come back to him and you should be able to interact with the statues already. Okay, so now I'm back at the entrance. So we have gone there already on the left side as well and then on the second level. Now it's time to go to the lower level. Alright, so you can see the joint banners of the Elvenor and Felgarth faction and sub-factions. This is where you can find the contractor for Felgarth. There we go. Nothing really much here, it's just a huge library. Maybe a placeholder for something in the future. We're going to the right. And this is the hall where you can find the NPC for Stormcaller and also the statue for the Stormcaller sub-faction. So you get the um, sub-faction quest from Athos, complete it, come back here, and then interact to unlock the Stormcaller sub-faction. Now, in this beautiful terrace, you can find Grandmaster Ferengar, and he will be the one to give you the sub-faction quest to unlock the Order of Arcanum. Finish the quest, come back here to him, and then go to the shrine or the statue that I showed you earlier for the Arcanum. Going to the right again. We'll see an altar here. So this is the Tempest Altar. And then the Stormcaller's pet, just purely decoration. And then the two NPCs that will tell you on how to start your faction quest. This is for the Elvenor and this is for Felgar. So the Elvenor is going to ask you to find your initial faction quest giver, Mage Brulix, the same as the previous version, it's just a different location now. And for Felgarth, you need to find Milandra Akari. There we go. Alright. Now, this place is very interesting. If you can see, it's not only that they have one portal. So that portal leads you to the faction quest NPC, just like in Stormhold, they have six more extra portals. So let's check them out. This one will lead you to Super Maru. This one will lead you to the Palace of the Witch Queen. Kilgorian Village. The Elvenor camp in the unnamed city. Felgarth camp as well. The Frost Temple. And the Azagarth. And this portal will lead you to your quest and PC for the faction. Here we go. Mage Brulix. And Melandra Akari. 
So the same as the Stormhold, it's already numbered. These are the initial faction quests that you need to take. The same with Melandra Akari. Now showing you my map. As you can see, they're not scattered anymore. So Redcliffe earlier. And we're just here. Now all you need to do is just walk back and you will be teleported back to your faction hub. There you go. We're back at the faction hub. And the last rework on our list. And of course, one of my favorite factions is the Cold Embrace. Let's check it out. Whoa. All right. So for those who are familiar, I'm not going to spoil it, but this place looks really familiar. So we're going to check the store and this is what you're going to get. Only Lady Aranaya has the key for this door. So no, thank you. We're not going to touch that. If she's gonna get mad, that's not gonna be good. Alright, so I kinda opened this door already earlier, so it's still open. We're just gonna go down. You may have to use um, a bit of a light source because... Well, Cold Embrace is gloomy and dark. And cold. So here we go. So it's a very creepy place, but it's kinda beautiful at the same time. It's like a burial chamber. And they all look like burial chambers for women. So I would safely assume it's for the Sanguis unit. So you go to the right. And you will see the statue for the uh, Knights of Imperius. So after you do your sub-faction quest, you can interact and you'll become a Knight of Imperius. However, the NPC is just right here. So this quest NPC, Lord Skyer, um, he's the one who's going to give you the sub-faction quest in order for you to unlock the Knights of Imperius sub-faction. Alright, once you are done doing his mission, you come back here and then you can already interact with the statue. Now this one right here also has a very funny prompt. A mysterious sound comes from the other side of the door. I don't know, maybe a placeholder, I'm not really sure. But it's quite interesting. And then right here, you can find one of the secret spells for blood magic. And this is the Shattered Crystal. This is the altar for blood magic. The uh, first level. Because blood magic has two altars. There you go. Now, we're going to check the second level. Alright, so we're back at the entrance. Going up. Uh, those doors are not something that you can interact, so just forget about it. And then, this is the portal that would lead you to the initial quest NPC for your faction quests. We're going to take care of that later on. We're going to go straight and go to the right, just like what we always do. And you will see a very noticeable banner. So this is the Sanguis unit. Uh, okay, don't mind me. Just passing by. They're just chilling. They have a swimming pool. Imagine that. So this is the statue that you can interact after you have done the Sanguis unit sub-faction quest. Of course, you need to find the NPC first. So going across the hall... So you will see Sanguis unit just roaming around and a waiter. Waiter is, or a waitress, this is a unique NPC for the Cold Embrace. The other factions don't have a waiter or a waitress. They need to take a profession from the uh, Moonshiners Guild so that they can craft a waiter or can buy a waiter. Here's the contractor. Here we go. The same stuff that you can buy. And you will find Lady Arenaya Anarius. Now, she is the NPC 
or the sub faction for the Sanguis unit, of course. She is going to ask you to do something. Here we go. And then once you have done the quest that she's asking you to do, come back to her and then you can already interact with the statue for the Sanguis unit. Now, going back here, the portal towards the NPC for your faction quest. Just like always, we need to take a quest and it's going to ask you to meet up with Sir Vekaran. That is still the same NPC in the old version. It's just you have a direct access now. So I'll take it. And just walk in. And Lord Vekran is just here. There we go. Or Sir Vekran, rather. Initial quest for the faction. Numbered already for easy tracking. Now, let's see the map. Just in one area. Not that close to each other, but unlike before, Vekran was here right here so now they're just around here all of the faction quests are just gonna start around this area so we're just gonna walk back in and here we go and that is all for this tour for the new changes in the faction hall in some of the faction hubs i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one happy gaming everyone